We're live apparently. So welcome along. This is another Bake Along with Dot. We're back, which is very nice indeed. Um, I'm going to do all the usual stuff about sharing it and all of those types of things. So Dot, first of all, can you tell us how are you? Oh, I'm absolutely fine. I'm absolutely fine, yes. Um, been keeping really well. I'm one of the lucky ones that's already had my um, jib jab, so um, I've had the first dose. So I'm feeling very lucky and very happy. Oh, lovely. Yeah. How, how was your jab? Um, the jab itself was fine. Um, I went well for a little while after it, just for about 24 hours after it. I was a bit cold and a bit headachy, but after that, it was absolutely fine. Aww. So nothing for anybody to worry about. And can you tell us, for those that don't know, why you've got your jab and we're all having to wait still? Because I am extra special. Well, we know that. <laughs> no, I work for um, a, a, a hospital trust. I work for Great Western Hospital Trusts. And uh, they have, I have to say, have been absolutely fantastic. And they've really got to grips with the vaccine programme. Um, and they very quickly started to vaccinate the staff. Um, some of the shielded staff that we had had actually been vaccinated uh, in were done in December and have already had their second dose. Um, and then very quickly after that, they opened up and just um, inoculated any of the staff that wanted to be done. So um, I'm really, really pleased to be working for them. I, I don't know how other trusts are doing with their vaccination programmes, but um, I know that they're really good. They're a really good trust to work for. I'm really proud to work for them. That sounds good. So tell us, Dot, what do we have the pleasure of making tonight? Oh, well, tonight we're going to be making caramel shortbread, which I know is a favourite of quite a lot of people. It's not a hard thing to make. It doesn't have um, a lot of ingredients, but you do have to do them in stages. So um, we'll be making up. Shall I let you see? I've made one. Here's one I made earlier. This is the one I made earlier, all ready to cut into bits so we can um, cut it and, and look at it later. We can't eat it because I'm trying to be good and not get fat, but we can look at it. <laughs> I think most of us dot have um, had a few pandemic pounds. I know. I think that maybe what I should have done was something very slimming, <laughs> like a salad. <laughs> well, that would be nice. I'm just going to do a quick check for something, Dot, so excuse me a second. Yeah, that's fine. I have to say I'm very excited about this. Feels like age since I've spoken to everybody. Yes, it has been a while. Uh, oh, sorry, I've just clicked on a button, which I didn't mean to. Mm. There we go. Hopefully we're back to being up. Oh, we did do that. Lovely. Yeah. Cool. So hopefully everybody can hear us. I'm just double checking that uh, people can hear us. Uh, sorry, I'm just... It's very exciting. I've never used this, this particular software before, so it's very exciting. Not that I have to use it, I just have to stand here and cook. Richard does all the hard work. But... Oh, it's, it's incredible hard work. It really is. I'm, I'm <laughs> set up clicking buttons. I'm having people messaging me saying, where's the link and stuff? So I'm trying to, uh, desperately trying to get them. Okay. Um, Shall we just chat a little bit then? <laughs> so can you tell us any preparations that people need to do? That would be a good thing to start with. Okay, so preparations that you need to do is obviously, like all the recipes that I've done, you'll have weighed out all your ingredients beforehand. You'll need a baking tin. I'm using a square um, tray bake tin. So this is the tin I'm using today, which is just a square tray bake tin. Um, and I've lined it. So I just popped a piece of crease proof paper in it and then pushed it down so that it goes to all the edges so that you've just got a nice lined tin. Okay. If it, if it doesn't work very well at the corners, you can just cut it a little bit so that it sits a bit neater in the tin. So that's the need for that. You're going to need a bowl to put your chocolate in. And you're going to need, um, I'm going to use, to, to melt my chocolate, I'm going to use what's called a pan marie. So that's a pan with some hot water in it. And then you set the bowl on the top. You can do this in the microwave if you prefer, but I'm going to do it on a pan marie because my microwave's the other side of the kitchen. And you're also going to need a, a big pan, and, and I do mean get quite a big pan, um, because once you start to make the caramel, it will bubble up like a volcano, and it's better to be in a big pan so you're protected a bit. So apart from that, um, I'm going to use um, a, a food processor to mix my shortbread, 
but you can do it in a ball just with rubbing it in. And once I've started this, I will give you a little bit of extra time and we'll have a chit chat to give people time if they're rubbing it in by hand because it will take slightly longer than it will with me from my little um, fancy machine here. You've got all the lovely mod cons. <laughs> this is not a particularly good one, I have to say. I used to have a really good um, food processor and it broke and I just needed a quick food processor. So I went to um, the local electronic shop and picked this one up, but it's not particularly good. I'm sure. Um, I'll invest in, in a, a nice Magi mix one of these days. Right. Well, I think we're kind of ready to start going. So, um, so yeah. Okay, well, let's start the caramel shortbread then. So we're going to start off, first of all, by turning the oven on. So you've got to cook the shortbread first. So we start off by baking the shortbread, then we'll do the caramel, and then we'll put the chocolate topping on the top. So to, to start off well, let's turn the oven on, and I'm going to put my oven on to 180. And there's nothing more irritating when you're baking if you forget to turn your oven on, and then you have to wait for the oven to come up to temperature. So... That should be the first thing you do is switch it off and on, and then you're not having to wait for ages and ages. And then we're going to start with the um, shortbread. So very simple ingredients for the shortbread. We've got 250 grams of plain flour. We've got 75 grams of caster sugar. And in my fridge, because I wanted it to stay nice and cool, I've got 175 grams of butter. Um, what I'm going to do with the butter is I'm going to chop it up into cubes because it just mixes through things a lot better. If you're rubbing this in by hand, you particularly need to break this up into cubes. So just chop it up. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect cubes, just anything that sort of breaks it up a bit. <clears throat> just make it smaller so that it... When you put it into the food processor, you don't want to overwork it in the food processor or your shortbread isn't nearly as light and fluffy as it should be. So it's better to break the butter up first so that you don't have to spend too much time with the food processor or the rubbing in. Gentle handling is what shortbread needs. It's a bit like making pastry. You know, you don't want to have hot hands and you don't want to have, um, you don't want to be heavy handed with it then it stays nice and fluffy. So we've got lots of people see. watching, Dot. Sorry? Lots of people watching, lots of people joining in as well. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Yeah. Rose says she's watching and making notes so she can make it at her leisure at the weekend. Oh, well done. Yeah. Making it at the weekend probably means you probably not eat it all week like I probably will. <laughs> okay. So into the food processor or into your bowl if you're doing it by hand, you're going to put your flour. And one of the things I've learned with this food processor, and I don't know if everybody else is the same, is that I've got a hole at the top of my blade. And if I don't put my finger over the hole when I'm putting the flour in, it ends up going down the hole and onto the workshop. So that's why I've got the finger on the top. Very good. Okay, so that's that. Into that, we're then going to add our 75 grams of um, caster sugar. And then you're just going to tip in your butter. Couldn't it be easier, really, could it? It couldn't. Here's a scary, here's a scary one for you, Dot. Go on, oh, Steve's baking and she's supervising. I'm not sure which one I'm scared, more scared of, <laughs> Less supervising or Steve baking. <laughs> He's quite a good pick, is he not? I don't know. He's never invited me round, if I'm honest. So, I, you know, I feel rejected at that point. But uh, never mind. And I've had chats with him about cooking and things like that. I always got the impression he's quite a good cook. Who knows? He no doubt I'll... A cook. Whether he can do it or not, I don't know. He can certainly talk it. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got to pop my um, food processor onto the machine now. Lock it in. Now, if you're rubbing this in by hand, this is going to take you just a little bit longer than it will take me. And as I say, the key to this is don't overwork it. So don't have it, don't go and go and go and go and go with it. Just let it break up until it's, it looks like um, breadcrumbs. So I'll just give it a quick quiz. This is a wee bit noisy, but not for too long. There we are. That's that, I think. 
Now, we're an ordinary shortbread. If you were making shortbread to just eat, then that would be the mix made. But I find that with caramel shortbread, I don't want the shortbread to be quite as, as short as a piece of shortbread because when you cut into it, you end up with all the crumbs in the bottom and none of the shortbread on the actual caramel shortbread. So I have to say that I do add a little bit of water. It's not in the recipe, but I add it anyway. Well, let me just... You're well, uh, outside of a recipe, Dot. That's outrageous. <laughs> well, this is my recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Sorry, I'm allowed to do what I like. <laughs> well, we do have another message for you here, Dot, just to let you know. Right. It's from the lovely Sarah. Oh. She says, we love you, Dot. Oh, I love you too. I miss everybody so much. But you know what? We're nearly there now, aren't we? But it, we're definitely on the way out now. We'll all be together soon. I'm feeling it. I'm just feeling it. Sounds good. So I'm going to add just a little bit of water. And I, I do mean just a little bit, probably about a tablespoon. And then start it up again. Just a bit more. A bit stingy there. Here we are. You can see it's starting to um, emulsify together. So it's done when it starts to look like that. I told you it was a stupid process and that, that thing falls out. It kind of annoys me. Can you get your tin? If you're rubbing it in, you just tip it into your bowl. So with this, we just do the same. So just tip it in. Watch your fingers on the blade, health and safety. It still looks crumbly, but don't worry about that. Once you've manipulated it a bit, it'll all come together. And then what you want to do is to spread it out so that it goes to all the corners of the tray. And as you begin to manipulate it, you'll see it starts to melt together. And try and get it as smooth as you can, as even as you can across the tray, so you don't have a lot of shortbread in the middle and not very much shortbread on the sides. You want every single piece that you cut to have a good bit of shortbread and a good bit of caramel and a good bit of chocolate. So you need to get it nice and smooth. You just have to work away at it. So presumably this is the part where people might be slightly behind if they don't have the uh, food processor. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll just diddle away with this. We can have a wee chat. What would you like to chat about? Well, I'm going to go all corporate for a, for a minute. And Carry just, on. Um, just talk about Mist 2 that's coming up. Um, I know any emails have gone out and I had somebody reply to me earlier on saying, the email looks lovely, but could you actually tell us when it is? Um, so that has now been amended. Um, but uh, it's the weekend of the 19th of February. For those that missed, missed. That sounds good. Um, back in May, I think it was, of last year. It's an online weekender. Um, it's great value. If you book early before the 31st of January, it's only £20 for the whole weekend. Or you can book uh, just days this time as well. So either the Saturday or the Sunday. There'll be loads of rooms. At the, and each day is just £15 that way around. Um, there are limited spaces. I think already half the spaces have got. So don't, don't delay it too long, is all I would say. And uh, I know there's loads of good teachers, loads of good DJs. They've got other rooms as well. Um, you don't think there's a bake along with Dot, is there? Because I think you're working, Dot. But, um, I am working, yeah. 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 I'll yeah. wait until the NHS needs you. <laughs> well, we've actually had a lot more people um, self-isolating this time than we did last time. Uh, when there was a lockdown, so, but not for much longer, because I retire very, 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 very soon now. Do you? When do you retire then, Dot? You don't look I old enough to retire, on, of course. I retire on the 1st of April. Wow. At the age of just 42. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm retired nearly. <laughs> As in 21 again. <laughs> I actually stayed on an extra year. I could have retired last year, but I stayed on an extra year, so... I'm ready to go now. Thank you, nurse, you did. And what do you plan to do once you've retired then? Well, it's a bit difficult to know because it, it, I don't know what it's going to look like. I know I'm going to be doing lots of gardening because retiring in April, that's just the gardening season starting. So I think I'll be doing a lot of gardening. Um, 
I would love to say that I'm going to be doing lots of dancing, but I think that might be a little bit later in the year before I can get back to that. Uh, and I'm just going to be doing lots of baking. I've started a project to redecorate the house and have a new kitchen. And um, so I'll just continue with that till I've done the whole house. And then I never want to see a paintbrush again because I'm so fed up looking at a paintbrush. I was rushing and rushing and rushing because they were going to be fitting my carpets on Monday. And um, I had two bedrooms and the whole station landing to redecorate before they came. So I, when I went to book the carpets, to, to buy the carpets on Boxing Day, I thought I would have like about six or eight weeks before they would deliver it. But they said, oh, no, no, we can deliver it um, on the 25th of January. So I thought, oh, oh, my neck. So I came home and started and just did it. And my son and my daughter-in-law were going to help me. Uh, but then, of course, we went into lockdown, so they couldn't. So I've had to paint and decorate everything myself. <laughs> and I'm so sick of looking at paintbrushes. And then they, they rang me on Friday to tell me the carpet hadn't arrived, the delivery hadn't arrived. And so they're not fitting it now until the 8th of February. No. So I could have had a bit more time to do it. But it is what it is. And now that you will have more time, I ask this every single time just because I want to watch it, if I'm honest. But... Um, but are you any closer to accepting my my uh, encouragement for you to take part in Bake Off? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I have had more than enough stress in my life to last me a lifetime. I do not need to stress Bake Off. <laughs> no, I, I, these competition things are just not for me. I, I, I think I would just be too I'd be too worn out. I think by it all. And, uh, and if I'm honest, I don't like it as much as I used to like the old one. Okay. Um, I, th I think they make some really silly things that, I mean, they're supposed to be amateur bakers, and I, I think they forget that they're supposed to be amateur bakers, and not everybody can, you know, make all these fancy things that they bring out of nowhere. Yeah. To me, that's like a, for a professional baker. It's not for an amateur baker, but that's just my opinion. Fair enough. And one more question before we get on. This is a question from Rose again. So uh, will we have to throw you a virtual retirement party, Dot, or maybe we can make you a cake for a change, if allowed? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? That, that is one of the few things that I'm really, I'm not exactly upset about, but it feels strange that I won't be able to properly close the door. You know, like you, that part of having the retirement do at work is to say goodbye to everybody and kind of close the door on it but I won't be able to do that because I can't be traveling around and I can't be going to see people and um, so it just feels a bit odd that I'll just it feels to me like I'll just shut the door one day and walk out my office and that'll be it and, yeah. and I think it'll just be really I don't think I'll fully feel like I've properly um finished it right you know and the, the, the funniest thing is i'm having to interview for my own job so that's just like really weird i think that's just no one will, no i can't one get ahead of that. Him that at all you know picking my successor is just like really <laughs> who's ever going to be as good as me <laughs> no one right i think we're ready to do the next part dogs yes indeed so what i've done is i've smoothed it all out um, so that it's nice and level. So you've got a nice spread of the shortbread right across the tin. And now we're going to do what's called docking it. So that just really means that you're going to put some air holes in it using a, a just a fork. You don't need anything fancy for it. You don't want to like really hammer it down to the very bottom. All you're doing is you're giving it some um, space so that the air and the steam can get out of the shortbread so that it doesn't rise. Because you don't want rise on the shortbread. You want it to stay quite flat. So all you really need to do is just press the fork so you can see some holes all the way down and then just go over the whole lot and this is called docking it. You just carry on docking it till you've given it all a good aeration. I was waiting for you to say until you've given it a good forking then, but <laughs> yeah. you're actually I'm not sure how that would come out. <laughs> So now it's got a whole lot, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got a whole lot of little pin prick holes in it. And that's, that will just let the steam come out. And then all we have to do with it then is to pop it into the oven and it's going to bake for 25 minutes. So set your timer now. 
for 25 minutes and then pop it in the oven. And I'm sure it'll be a question that everybody says again because they've probably forgotten, but what temperature for the oven, Dot? I've got my oven at 180. I'm going to have a wee tidy up. Right, so I do like to have a wee tidy workspace. Tidy workspace, tidy mind, they say. And then that's stage one done. How exciting is that? Easy peasy peasy. Tell us what, what about stage two. Phase two, we're going to make the caramel. So there are some health and safety things about making caramel. If you're making this for children, this is not a stage that you should let the children um, do after it starts to bubble. It honestly is. If it gets on your skin, it really does give you some nasty, nasty burns. So keep children away for this particular part of it. They can stir it until it starts to bubble, but as soon as it gets to bubbling stage, you need to get the children away from the pan. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I've actually got a burn on. Oh, I don't know, you can't see it. I've got a burn on where I can't get my wrist in the right place, but I've got a burn here that was from caramel, and it's been there for ages and ages, and it won't go away. Um, so it is nasty, and I, I think I have rarely done this when I haven't had a scold. So... Tip number two is if you're not near the sink like I am, so I'm really close to the sink when I'm making the caramel and I've got my tap too cold so that if I do get scalded, I can get my hand under the tap really quickly. Um, if you don't have that, then I suggest you put a bowl of cold water next to the stove wherever you're cooking it so that you can plunge your hand in quickly and that will save you getting too scaldy a burn. The other tip is to use a, a spoon that's got a really long handle so you can be as far away from the caramel as possible so that you're not... Um, don't hold the, hand, the handle down here near the pan, but hold it really near the, the bar. And use a decent sized pan so that it's got room to move and it's not going to bubble over as you're making it. So to make the caramel, you need two tins of condensed milk. I love condensed milk. Somebody asked earlier, should it be sweetened or plain? And I said, depends on how sweet your tooth is. Yeah, I don't know, I just... I guess it's sweetened. It doesn't actually particularly say it's sweetened. It just says it's condensed milk. So um, when I was really young, my mum used to make a Scottish tablet and fudge. And she used to use something called Fussell's condensed milk. And it was so thick and gloopy and sugary. And um, it, it was a real treat that you got the tin to scrape out when she was making the fudge. So we used, to, we used to spread it onto um, sandwiches and have sandwiches and then add sugar, believe it or not. It's incredible nowadays, but that's what we used to do. Um, so this is the condensed milk going in. It's really thick and gloopy, so you'll need a spatula to get it all out. And you're going to need two tins of that right into the bottom of the fan. Okay. Watch yourself on the can lid. Just while you're doing that, I'll uh, I'll just give you some uh, some talk from some of the people. So Steve put initially, should he hand over to Claire? That is uh, Steve's initial thoughts. <laughs> Claire then said, Steve is wondering if he is a child. And uh, and Dawn then put quite simply, yes. So I, I'm getting <laughs> that's in response to if Steve is wondering if he's a child, but. Uh, <laughs> We go, well, you could ask the word yes to everything, really. <laughs> well, you need to hand over to a responsible adult. <laughs> yeah, well, that knocks me out. I only say that because caramel shortbread is something that my grandsons like to make, but this is the one bit that I'm not keen on them getting anywhere near is making the caramel. And they're quite competent little cooks. But, uh, but I worry about that. So that's the, that's the condensed milk in the pan. Then you're just going to add your sugar, which is 100 grams. Now, this is um, muscovado sugar. So the, it's different from caster sugar because it will give it more of a caramelly flavour. So this is light muscovado sugar, but you can also get a dark one. So the darker you go, the more, um, the more it tastes of like molasses or um, dark, dark caramel. So yeah. this is light muscovado sugar, which will give it a caramel flavour without making it too dark. So when, it, when your caramel is made, it will be that light golden colour rather than a dark golden colour. And then you're going to add in your butter. Again, I'm going to chop it up a bit so that it melts, just so that it melts a bit quicker. 
It doesn't have to be chopped up very much. It's all going to melt anyway. And that's all your ingredients for your caramel. So now we have to move over to the stove. I think you should be able to see it. Okay. I'm going to see all the clutter as well. But And I'm going to move from the spatula to my wooden spoon so that I'm a long way away. <laughs> I know I probably sound a bit neurotic about this, but I've had some really nasty scalds from it. No, that's okay. <laughs> so, Anna's asked, hi all you lovely people, hope you're all well, missing you. Has Dot got on to Bake Off? So that's not me asking this time, Dot. That's somebody else asking. I know, I'm not going on Bake Off. <laughs> yeah. And uh, an actual cooking question. Alexis asks, how much butter? 100 grams. 100 grams of butter, 100 grams of sugar. Two tins of carnation milk or condensed milk. Then put your heat on. And once you put the heat on, folks, you're going to have to keep... I think I might just need to move that a wee bit so you can see me. Is that better? So, okay. Yeah. So once you, once you start at the heat on it, you, you can't move away from it. You have to stay with it and keep it moving. If you let it stick to the bottom of the pan, it will crystallise and you'll end up with lumpy caramel. So just keep on stirring it. So this is going to take me a while so we can have a chat. Yeah, so, so Dawn's now put, um, she's refusing to understand. Does anyone have any forms we can send in for her regarding Bake Off? No, I'm not going on Bake Off. I'm absolutely not going to be cool. I can't this think of anything. You saying this not. We I just love watching you. Hate wash. It's just you're an entertaining person, daughter. We all love you. <laughs> that may well be the case, but I'm I'm just your people. I'm not anybody else's. No. <laughs> if she's Sorok's oh, people, gosh. everyone. <laughs> we get the pleasure of her, and not national TV. Absolutely. <laughs> I love that you all have such confidence in me, though. It's lovely. We do. Absolutely. <laughs> Here's a question for everyone. When does everybody think they're going to get their hair cut next, then? Oh, I don't know. I'm back to having the pleasure of Zoe cutting my hair again shortly. And, do you not um, think that they might start to open some things up again, though? Like how it was in, like, Tier 4, maybe? Because they'll have to bring it out gradually, won't they? They won't be able to, to just drop everything. We hope so. Yeah. And obviously, being out in the West Country as we are, it's, uh, yeah, hopefully it's not so bad around here. Yeah, I mean, before lockdown, we would, I don't think we got to Tier 4, did we? We were just Tier 3. No. So if they bring us out in tiers again, then, then I think we might be able to get some things. Oh, do you know what? It's all going to be over soon, isn't it? It's... It is. So Rose is... Um... It's an amazing thing to have been part of, though, isn't it? I mean, I mean it's horrible. The whole thing is horrible. But you, you've been part of history, haven't you? You've lived through something that will be part of history forever. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's never been anything quite like it. So... And I am so proud to have been part of the NHS that has just kept going through all of it. You know, I mean, I know I work in dentistry and I'm no saving lives or anything like that. But um, just the fact that you've been there for people when they needed it through all of it has just, it is, I'm really proud. I'm really, really proud. I think everybody who has been a key worker of any kind should be really proud. Absolutely. There's... Um... You know, from the, the front line on the NHS to, you know, just I had to pop into Tesco last night and um, yeah. you know, just seeing people that are out there every day mixing with the general public. You know, lots yeah. of people are, are scared to leave their houses, whereas there's, you know, millions of people having to uh, be on the front line still. So, uh, yeah, well done yeah. to everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Delivery drivers, all these people, you know, I just, I think they're just amazing. Keep stirring this caramel, don't ever let it stick to the bottom. Um, I, I just think everybody's been amazing. Absolutely. So um, on a very different note then, um, 
Rose is saying she's contemplating cutting her own fringe. Oh, <laughs> well, I watched a thing on TV the other day. Uh, that's how rock and roll my life is, about cutting your own fringe. And apparently you have to um, just do it, like, with the tip of the scissors and just very slowly with the, with the tip of the scissors so that you don't just, like, cut it straight across. So not just to go like this, snip, snip, snip. <laughs> well, I think you're supposed to do it like that way, snip, snip, snip. So hold it and go snip, 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 snip. So Joe has put that um, Paul's cut hers already. Oh, well done. I, I did it for Zoe earlier on that I was happy to cut her hair, but apparently my uh, my scissor skills weren't quite up to it. Now, if I can give some information on that, the chance of me cutting a straight line when doing Christmas wrapping um, on the paper for that is is zero. Um, so I think the chance of me cutting Zoe's hair in a straight line, you just hear saying oops all the time. <laughs> I think I've got a ball that's just the right size if she wants it. <laughs> I'll let you tell her that one. <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah I know this is a bit tedious, folks, but keep on stilling. It's worth it in the end. No, that's okay. Dawn has put on here regarding caramel problems. She says, I believe my ex hubby as a child and his father had to throw, I think that's throw, out the pan out after trying to make caramel. <laughs> so the, the trick if your caramel does go wrong, this one's not going to go wrong because you're not going to leave the pan, uh, but if it does go wrong, the trick with the caramel is to put um, water in the pan and boil the pan back up again with the water in it, it'll loosen everything and then you should be able to get the pan clean after that. I can say people are going to need to tidy up at some point. <laughs> so how long do you anticipate the caramel bit taking for people then? Um, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to do it right to the end. You, you need to let it come to the boil slowly and because you're stirring it all the time, it does take longer for it to come to the boil. And then once it's come to the boil, it needs to boil for about five minutes. But okay. you know, mine's is just, I can just feel a bit of resistance in mine now. It's just beginning to go a bit thicker. This is the most tedious bit of making caramel shortbread. It's the all best bit of eating it. <laughs> I'm going to say, you may notice that Zoe is not joining in, and that's because uh, we are on a slight health kick to uh, slightly get in shape for mist too so uh, if we make caramel shortbread we're definitely just going to eat it all because we love it <laughs> yeah i promised it to my next door neighbors because so i can't eat it i promised it to them <laughs> no. yes and they're young and very slim and they've never they've got a young baby and that oh god they're out the house i see them go past the door i don't know how many times a day they take that child out for a walk to get yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he once. Yeah. So um, Claire's put, um, she missed it as she was supervising. What was it, please? I think this is to do with a good cleaning tip. Well, a good cleaning tip is um, once you've finished with your caramel, so this particular kind of caramel doesn't stick very hard to the pan. I think what she's talking about is when you make it just by dissolving the sugar in some water. Um, if you Fill the pan with some hot water, with some water, and then just boil the pan up. It should loosen all the toffee type stuff that's stuck to the pan off, and then you should be able to clean the pan quite easily. But if you really, really, really welded it to the pan, then it might not work. But um, I, I've made the the toffee kind a few times, and um, you just have to take your eye off it for a second, and damn it, it's gone. So. <laughs> So a question from Ali Moore, what temp should the caramel be on? How hot? Um, well, I've got it on my smallest ring, but I've got it as high as my smallest ring will go. You don't want to bring it up to temperature too quick because it will crystallise too much. So I've got it on my smallest ring on my stove, and I'm just letting it gently come up to temperature. And for those that are posh and have induction hobs, I'm guessing oh. that's three or four. 
Mm, I don't know because I don't have a cook on an induction hob. So you want it to be. Oh. So it's not on a really low heat. So the smallest induction hob and put it to. Uh, not on power, that's for sure. So. No. I'd yeah, probably say about good. five on induction hob would be fine. Yeah. Any lower than that it tends not to do anything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I have cooked on induction hobs before, but not much. Oh, oh come on. Bring up. Rose says she's she now has her induction hob. Oh. I think Rose has recently moved. I know. She's had a new kitchen. Has she? I won't I won't throw it out. Yeah. I've been thinking about what I'd like to have when I um move and whether I would like to have an induction hob or not. But my son and his wife have got one of these um big stoves and it's got like three ovens in it. Mm -hmm. And I just think, oh what can you do with that stove? Or a tea dance. Imagine having three ovens. When That's I'm it. doing the tea dance, it would just be like, oh. oh. We all miss the tea dances. Oh, do I ever. The other day I came across the um, the jigsaw. You know, remember the jigsaw? Oh, yeah. yeah, I came across that when I was, I was cleaning things out to let the carpet man come. Oh, we never came. No. And I came across the picture with the jigsaw in it because I, I used to like to bring it to the tea dance. Uh, for those that aren't aware, that was um, Paul Jeffrey, I believe it is. Um, he went round and he he kind of visited all of the different tea dances across the country and uh, and named the Chippenham one the number one tea dance in the country. And one of the main reasons for that, of course, was Dot's Cakes as well as Kevin's music. So, uh, so yeah, it was amazing. Oh, and so all the dances are amazing. And yeah, we can't wait to get back there. If I'm honest, it will oh, happen yeah. again. It will happen again. So if anybody does have any questions, you can ask me if you want any questions as well. But for Dot as well, then please do feel free to put them in the uh, in the chat function. Um, if you want to go to the Siroc Live page, if you are watching on one of the different streams that are going out at the moment, the Siroc Live page is where all the uh, the chatting is going on regarding the um, people that are putting notes on. And do feel free to do that. You won't miss anything. It's Dot stirring the pan at the moment. So. <laughs> Honestly, it does eventually go up, right? <laughs> so, uh, I should never take my eyes off it for a minute. It'll go, and I'll just, that'll be it. And just from a health and safety perspective, Dot, I think you're holding the spoon a touch low. Yeah, I, you're absolutely right, I am, but it's not bubbling yet. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> We're just concerned, that's all. <laughs> yeah. But the, uh, the jigsaw was the prize for winning the uh, the best tea dance in the country. Um, so it was great. Um, so, yeah, Sarah says that um, we are too busy stirring, which is good. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's so tedious, this bit. It's worth it, though, because you get really nice creamy caramel. Yes, it is worth it. Um, and in answer to Rose's question, are we using a different streaming function? Uh, yes, I thought I found this one. Um, the lovely Steve Thomas, I think, uses this one as well. And uh, yeah, I looked at it and it seems very good. And the reason it's good is because I'm small and Dot can be in the main picture, which is really not good. I'm big. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that, Dot. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and it's quite nice. We can pop people's uh, comments up as well, which is, uh, I guess, another functionality which is really nice as well so um so yeah so andrew for 100 grams of condensed milk and um, yes 100 grams of butter and 100 grams of um no there's two tins of condensed milk and the tins are i think something like 395 let me see how much it is don't forget to uh 397 gram tins and it's two of them two, two of them those. and then the 100 grams <coughs> Butter and the 100, 100 grams, grams of butter and 100 grams of sugar. Oh, look, see, it took my off the ball there and it's sticking to the sides. Oh, yeah, do that. oh Richard. Okay, me. <laughs> it's all right, I saved it. That's all right then. <laughs> and this is a scary one. My father put abs cut my fringe this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, mercy. 
Yes. That is quite scary. But there we go. Oh, it's thickening up. It's thickening up. Hope yours is thickening up as well. Oh, 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 oh. Finally, so what, finally we're there. We're what's going to gonna happen once it's thickened up then, Dot? I'm going to have to let it boil for a few minutes. Oh, look, mine's a stand blister. Is everybody starting to bubble a bit? Yeah, we need to know how far behind or how in front people are. Um, obviously, people have had their temperatures at different settings and all sorts of stuff. So, um, so do let us know if you are miles behind or anything like that. Um, uh, we've been moving on to the next stage in the not too distant future. Yeah, hang in there. Oh, it's all starting to bubble. Yeah. Looks a bit like a volcano when it starts to bubble. It goes bloop, bloop. And that's why you get splashed with it. So, Claire Newell put yes, bubbling. I'm guessing, yeah, that's, the, um, I'm guessing that's the caramel and not the Prosecco again. So you've got about just under four minutes left on your, your shortbread. And I would think that by the time your shortbread's ready, your caramel will do be ready. So just keep, this is when you need to get away from the handle, from the pan a bit. And be safe. A question from Andrea. She says, yes, nearly. When does the chocolate go in? Oh, not the end. Yet. The chocolate's the coating on the top. So we're not there yet. No, 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 no. This is stage two of three. Oh, oh, oh look at that. Oh. You generally do seem very excited, Dot. I love it. I love it when it goes just bubbly. Very exciting. Good. So I have to say, I do have the pleasure of having an induction hob now for doing all the cooking. And, yeah. uh, and I love it. Um, yeah. I, and the one thing that I found really scary is that after I've cooked, no matter kind of what I've cooked, you realise how much splatter there is of everything. <laughs> yeah. When you've got gas, you don't notice it quite so much. Because you've got all the different surfaces there. So, uh, no, so yeah. this is, um, I've got gas, but with my top is glass. Oh, okay. Uh, and it is just a right so and so to keep clean. Yeah. No matter how many times I wipe it and wash it and clean it. Oh, oh look, it's getting really thick. So um, Susan put mine's gone like a thick paste. Shall I take it off the heat? Uh, it should go like a thick paste. If she feels that it's ready, then she should take it off because it should be like a thick paste and it should be bubbling like a volcano. There you go. Hopefully that is the case for you, Susan. Yeah, Rose put regarding the induction hob, because that's obviously the, uh, the key thing here. Um, it's so easy to wipe clean, it looks I like new again. Yeah, I mean, right. that is one of the things that does appeal to me, I have to say. Yeah, I do love it. It's and The power function is amazing. I've never seen water boil so quick. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's all good fun. I have a friend who's um, elderly parents have moved into a new house and they were, of course they, went, they moved in just before lockdown and she hasn't been able to go down and help them and it was all things like they couldn't get the heat into mark and they couldn't get the cooker, they thought the cooker was broken they were going to have to have a new cooker and all this and when she went down they just hadn't switched the heating on and um, it was an induction hob and they just couldn't get the hang of the fact that they had to have a pan on it mm. before it would actually come on. So they, they were like pressing, 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 pressing. So all they were doing was pressing it on and off and on and off and on and off. Yes. Couldn't quite get a hang of it at all. Yeah. Uh, she, said, she said, I was just trying to explain to them, you know, that you actually have to put a pan on it. You have to have special pans though, don't you? Yeah, you do. But I mean, we're at the fortunate point maybe fell off my chair, um, where um, we need to buy new pans anyway. So that wasn't too bad for us, and they, they weren't particularly expensive. Um, yeah, any more, no more different than a normal good set of pans. Um, yeah. But yeah, well, you I think I've caramel ready now, so I'm just going to switch it off. Just. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
Gorgeous, looks gorgeous. Crack a sister. Oh, bing, bing, bing. That's your shortbread ready as well. So out comes the shortbread. So you can see my shortbread is kind of a little bit brown. Lovely. And then all you need to do is, oh, that's just gorgeous. Now, my big tip for this is use the wooden spoon to scrape it out and don't scrape it out too much because you want to go around with a spatula later and put it into a bowl because that's the chef's perks. So in goes the caramel on top of the shortbread. Looks amazing. <laughs> it's gorgeous. And the good thing is it's very healthy for you as well. Oh, I know, I know. I'm trying to see if I can claim any of my five a day in this store. I had, I had some um, blood tests done at the doctor's the other day, and they told me that I'm eating too much sugar and there's too much glucose in my blood. And uh, I thought, mm, I'm not really surprised, <laughs> too much glucose in my blood, really. Um, but I'm supposed to be really good and be cutting it down. So I've got to go back for some more blood tests. Um, so you, you want to spread it out be careful because the dish is obviously quite hot because it's literally just out the oven spread it out so that it's nice and even and then you're just going to put it somewhere to cool down slightly while we sort out the chocolate so I'm just question, going to put it from, question from Helen should the caramel be dark in colour it depends what kind of sugar you've used mine is quite light in colour because I used light muscovado sugar if you use dark muscovado sugar it will be darker um if you've overcooked it it'll get the more you cook it the darker it'll get but if you think you can probably i let you see mine without scolding myself to bits but mine is quite golden caramel i'm just going to put this over here in the cool i'll be back in two seconds Aww. While you're away, I'll, I'll just post this up from my father. Well, can't see that at the moment, just to let you know. And uh, just before she's back, I'll remove it. What was that? What was that? It's nothing, Dot. Yes, it was. I'll, I'll pop it back up again for you. So it's my father saying you have a naughty laugh, Dot. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> so this is the best bit, folks. So what you've got to do is you've got to use a spatula to scrape all the bits off. Really, this helps to make it easier to clean the pan. <laughs> yeah, <That's wonderful>. right. <laughs> scrape off all the nice bits. And then scrape the nice bits out the pan as well. <laughs> so Claire has put, she's licking the spoon. I know, it must be roasty hot. <laughs> I've at least got enough control, Claire, to make it cool as a bit. <laughs> I can't bear to put that in the bin. It's just like, oh, look at it. Look, it's already gone quite stiff. Oh, I can never have to work out where the camera is. It's, it's right. already quite stiff. Look. <laughs> There's a new endo bingo for the first time today. <laughs> yeah, I like when it's nice and stiff. Well, from Claire, this is taking the time for the worst, sis. She can handle hot things. <laughs> I can. Mm. <laughs> Honestly, it's absolutely delicious. Mm. <laughs> Taking me back to my childhood. Oh, <laughs> where was your childhood, Dot? Very quickly, while people are just catching up a little bit. Where was my childhood? I was brought up in um, Fife. I was born in a place called Kennyway, which is um, in Fife. Just um, so if you go to Edinburgh and go across the Force Road Bridge, that's Fife. And um, I lived there until I don't know, but nineteen eighty-ish. Then I moved to the borders and I lived in the borders for a while. 
And then I met somebody and moved down here um, in 1991. Yeah, so never regretted moving here. I love it here. Regretted the man. Don't regret it. No. Don't regret the, the move. No. no, we're very lucky to have you, Dot. <laughs> yeah, he was a rat bag, but there we go. Um, I mean, to be fair, we did a lot of travelling, and when things were nice, we had a really nice time. It was only after it went a bit pear-shaped, it was a bit no nice. Um, and he was a bit of a liar, but there we go. Such is life, eh? So, we move on to doing the chocolate now. So... I, I prefer milk chocolate for this, um, just because I prefer milk chocolate. But the key thing about the chocolate is pick a chocolate that you want to eat. If you wouldn't break a bit off and eat the chocolate, then it's not good enough to make caramel shortbread with or anything else. I never use cooking chocolate because I think cooking chocolate is just, I don't know, if you break a bit of cooking chocolate off and eat it, it's just like eating fat, isn't it? It's just no nice. So I always pick chocolate that I like. So... I've got a drawer in my kitchen that's full of things like nuts and fruit and chocolate and various bits and pieces. So when I was doing this, I thought, well, I've got chocolate. I've got everything I need. I don't need to go shopping. Um, but then I realised that all the chocolate that was left was um, dark chocolate because I like milk chocolate, so I'd eat all the milk chocolate. So because I want it to be milky, um, I've actually put some um, white cocoa fat into it as well because I also make chocolates, and so I happen to have cocoa fat, which will make it a little bit more milky. So that's why I've got two colours in my bowl, but you should just have 200 grams of whatever chocolate you want to use on the top. And like I say, pick a nice one, pick one that you like to eat. So if garlic is your favourite, then make it with garlic. Say if um, My favourite at the moment is, there's one in Sainsbury's called Tony's Chocolate, and it's really nice, I like that. And they, they make it in a mould so that all the bits are not the same size. So when you break off a bit, you never quite know what size of bit you're going to get. It's very exciting. How rock and roll is my life, eh? I get excited over what size of bit of chocolate is. I was, I was going to buy you some chocolate then, Dot, and then I thought, actually, you just said a minute ago, you're on a health kick now, so... I am. <laughs> You'll have to buy me an apple instead. I'll do that. <laughs> so I'm going to use Pan Marie, and that means I'm going to use pan with some water in it and a bowl that fits on the top. Um, the key thing about this is you're not cooking the chocolate, you're melting the chocolate. So you don't want the water in the pan to be right up to the top so that it touches the bottom of the bowl. There has to be a gap between the water and the bottom of the bowl so that the, the chocolate will melt but not actually cook. So with this one, I've, it looks like the bowl is far too big for the pan, but I want it like that so that the bowl doesn't actually go in and touch the water. And then we're just going to pop that onto the stove and let it melt. And again, how high should the gas be or the temperature be on the to melt it? Um, turn it up to, I, I've got it again on my smallest string. Almost everything I cook, I cook on the smallest string. But I've got it in the smallest string and as high as the smallest string will go. You want the water to start to simmer, but you don't want it to boil so that it touches the bottom of the bowl. So once it starts to simmer and you can see the chocolate start to melt, turn the heat down a little bit so it just stays simmering and just keeps the bowl hot. So what you're really trying to do is warm up the bowl. You can do this in a microwave. If you're doing it in the microwave, what I suggest you do is um, pulse it like for 10 seconds, stir it, 10 seconds and stir it, 10 seconds and stir it. It seems to take quite a long time to do it that way, but it stops you burning the centre of the chocolate before the rest of it gets melted. So it has to be on small bursts, stir, small bursts and stir if you're doing it in the microwave. But my microwave's the other side of the kitchen, and if I went across there to microwave for 10 seconds and 10 seconds, then I wouldn't be able to chat. So, oh. I could... <laughs> so, so I'm guessing this will take a few minutes just for that to heat up again. Yeah, just um, a wee bit. So in the hope that, uh, obviously, we're, I think we're going to be um, in lockdown for a while yet, or at least you know, not back into the normal world for a while yet, and just thinking out loud, maybe next time that we bake along something, maybe we could do a healthy thing. I don't mm -hmm. know if you make many healthy things at all or if that it is possible to do something like that. Um, I can't think of any much baking that's healthy. <laughs> or making something savoury, maybe. I know you mentioned before about making pork pies and stuff. Yeah, or... I can do 
eat healthy, savoury foods. I can do vegetarian and ve- vegan and, you know, meat dishes. I can do it. I'm not a bad cook, <laughs> but I wouldn't say that much my bacon is particularly... Um, yeah, I mean, you can do sugar-free cakes and you can... Um, that's the same as having sugar of having alcohol free wine though. There's, there's not yeah. much point. I mean, just because it's sugar free doesn't necessarily make it healthy. That's that's the thing. I don't think it's because it's not just the sugar that that makes you fat, is it? It's the it's the fats that you're using and the butter and you know the other dairy products and things that you're using. So it's so I can't think of any cake that I could make. I mean, you can make meringue and it's not got any fat in it, but then it's got loads of sugar in it. And um... well, I think Claire's, I think Claire summed it up really well here. I'll answer Helen's question, but help me <laughs> why? <laughs> because <laughs> so, so well, mean... back, back to the cooking then. So, are you cooling the caramel tray in the fridge, or is it left to cool at room temperature? So I've put it next to my back door because. Around about my back door is about the coolest place in the kitchen. You can put it in the fridge, but I don't really like putting very hot things into the fridge because it brings the temperature of the fridge up and all your other food can um, also get affected by it. So I don't put hot things in the fridge. Um, it will be enough if it's just standing in a cool part of the kitchen. Uh, all, all, all I want it to do, I don't want it to cool completely. It doesn't need to cool completely for us to finish this tonight. But what it does need to do is just have a skin on the top of it. So as long as it's sitting somewhere cool, um, it'll it'll be fine. So not right next to the stove. Lovely. Somewhere, somewhere a little bit away. And I'm just checking that, that chocolate's still okay behind you. I have visions of all of a sudden seeing your pan boiling over or something like that. But yeah, it's fine. Just beginning to the bowl's just beginning to get hot enough to melt it. Lovely. It's, um, what are your so I know you said you were going to do some gardening when you uh when you do retire you've got apart from dancing as well when we can get back to that any other oh, plans yeah. well I had plans to do lots of traveling but that's kind of been hit on the head so I think I'm just going to play it by ear I think maybe for the first few weeks I'll just stay in my jammies and not do anything I think I might just lie on the sofa and watch rubbish films for a um for a bit because I think I'm tired. I have. Um, it's been a hard year. You know, it's not been an easy year at, at work. Um, everybody's had to work really hard. It's not been easy for anybody in the NHS, and things are constantly, constantly changing, which um, I find tiring. Because you know, you we've remodeled the service that many times to try and keep up with everything, and it's it's I'm tired you now. So, You're ready to retire. I am. I am. I wasn't last year. I genuinely wasn't last year, but I am this year, I think. I just, no. I, w- I want to not have to get up in the morning until I'm ready to get up in the morning. and All the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting, though. I mean, I, you know, if, even when I'm off my work, I still wake up at the same time. My body's just conditioned to wake up at that time. You know, so you just do, don't you? Yeah, if it helps. I'm uh, I'm covering somebody's job in the morning, so I shall be getting up just after five mm. uh, to get into work for six. So uh, yeah, oh, caramel is lovely. <laughs> so, Rose, oh, sorry, wrong comment. Um, so Rose has put, "It is exhausting, Dot. You will need a rest and come and meet me for a coffee." Absolutely, Rose, and I cannot wait. I cannot wait, and I want to come and see your new house, your new kitchen. Get some ideas from you. And a, uh, another very important question from uh, from the lovely Des here. What's Dot's favourite cooking utensil? Oh. Mm. <laughs> That's a question you never thought of. <laughs> um, I think my favourite is probably my favourite knife. So I've got a... This is probably my favourite one, my favourite knife. But I've got a lot of utensils that I use a lot, like my um, my food mixer. I, I wouldn't like to be without my food mixer. Um, I've got a little mini chopper thing, and I wouldn't like to be without that as well. But 
there are not very many things in my kitchen that I wouldn't replace if they went wrong, because that to me is the sign of a good piece of equipment. If you wouldn't replace it, if it went wrong, then it's a useless piece of kit. But if you actually would replace it, then to me it's worthwhile what happened it. You just got to yeah. stem the chocolate. We have a question from Alice here. She says, can I add the melted chocolate before I eat it all? <laughs> She's saying the chocolate's melted now. Well, mine's is no. <laughs> I think people are actually uh, ahead of us for one stop. Yeah. Probably are. I was going to be now really that, sad. They said that theirs is melted. Did they do it on Ban Marie or did they do it in the microwave? I don't know that, but... So I was going to go and get my fa my favourite kitchen utensil in a really sad way. So we'll be back in about 20 seconds. <laughs> my chocolate's not melted yet. I'm really sorry. You just have to hang around there and wait for my chocolate to melt. In the meantime, we can eat caramel, which I have to say is just like my mum's tablet. I don't know if you've ever eaten a Scottish tablet or not, but it's it's really nice. <laughs> no, so this is my favourite kitchen utensil. Oh yeah. Oh, I love this kitchen utensil. So it's for chopping up um herbs. Mm. And just rock it from side to side and or spinach, it's really good for that as well. And mm. uh, yeah, this is the one tool if I lost it, I would definitely replace it. You see, and that's that's what sign of a good kitchen equipment is, isn't it? I haven't got one of them. I just um, roll it up, make a chiffonade and roll it up and chop it up that way. Um. You've got much better knife skills than mine then. Um, <laughs> so well, uh, this is what Sarah's saying. How's it being? <laughs> <laughs> she must be posher than me because all my wine bottles come with a screw off top. <laughs> you know what? I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> spending more on a wine than I am. <laughs> yeah. See the screw top or if it's a uh, bottle of uh, Prosecco then you can just take it out <laughs> and walk. So. I can't remember the last time I took my corkscrew out if I'm honest with you. Well there we go there's another innuendo bingo number three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, so Susan has put that hers is melted and on the caramel toffee. Oh, excellent. Well done, Susan. You're ahead of me. Max has no melted yet. Is it not? Oh, really it looks like it's steaming in the background. I can just see steam coming steam. over your left shoulder. Yeah, I know. I've just done it down a wee bit. It's, uh... I think it's because I added um, cocoa butter to mine. The cocoa butter is taking a wee while to melt. I have the pleasure of uh, every New Year's Eve, obviously, except for this one just gone by, when we do our New Year's Eve Warminster party. Um, the uh, New Year's Eve party that we have, we always do a chocolate fountain. So I'm always there in my tux at sort of 11 o'clock at night in the microwave. So that's how the, uh, we have the big bags. They're about 20 pound a bag for the uh, chocolate buttons that are designed to go on the chocolate fountains and melting those. And uh, yeah, there's always a little bit left in the chocolate at the bottom of the, um, of the bags. I think the strangest thing and the hardest thing is if there is any left at the end of the night, um, to clean the chocolate fountain. That's mm -hmm. always at two o'clock in the morning once we've packed down. That's always challenging, shall we say. I, you know, I never mind cleaning up anything, but the one thing I avoid like the plague is that chocolate fountain. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You always seem to disappear at that point, Doc. It's like <laughs> you're working all night for me. So, uh, I, once yeah. went, I once went to a party type thing where there was a lot of kids and they had a chocolate fountain. And... Um, they were, they were just disgusting, these kids. I, they were, like, putting their mouth over it, and, and, and yeah. it just made me heave, because I just kept thinking to myself, oh, they have bugs from their mouth. It's in that chocolate fountain, recycling in all that warm chocolate and multiplying and multiplying, and it just was making me heave. So I can't really see a chocolate fountain without thinking about that. No, I'm not right. a big lover of chocolate fountain. Get early or, or just have adults. So Rose, put, I tried to open a bottle of Prosecco last week and failed miserably. We'll have to wait until someone stronger can come round and open it. What? So, Rose, I'm out and about tomorrow. If you want me to pop pie, um, uh, I'm sure I could open your Prosecco for you. I don't think anything would stop me from being able to open a bottle of Prosecco. No. 
even if I had to bang it on the side of the counter, it would be open. Yeah. <laughs> I have had on the odd occasion just to prise it open with a knife, which is quite dangerous. Yeah, yeah. It. But uh, that is an option as well. But uh, yeah, that sometimes they're a bit uh, difficult to manoeuvre. But the uh, yeah, yeah. Well, this, obviously, is taking, this is taking a bit too long to melt. It's annoying me now. That's so, okay. So what's the next piece? <laughs> once it once it has melted. So once it has melted, you just pour it onto the top of your um your caramel. By the time it's melted, or the time this is melted, it will be stone cold my caramel. What you want to do is wait until it's semi-set. So it's not completely set and it's not completely cold, but it's semi-set. And then score it with a knife so that it should be set enough so that the marks stay in it. This will make it much easier when you come to cut it. And it will mean that you get nice sharp edges on each piece that you cut. Whereas if you don't do that, you're squeezing down on the chocolate, you're pushing the caramel out and you can't it breaks in all the wrong places. So make sure that you score it when it's semi-set. If you forget to score it, when you turn it out, turn it on the chocolate side on the bottom and cut it from the shortbread side down so you're hitting the, car the chocolate last and that way you won't break everything else underneath it as you're cutting it. But much, my much best way to do it is to, to score it as you're doing it. So we'll just tuck this one out. Here's one she made earlier, indeed. <laughs> so you can see on the side of it, we've got a nice layer of shortbread on the bottom, got a nice layer of caramel, and then quite a thin, nice layer of chocolate on the top. I don't like the chocolate to be too thick, but if you like it to be thick, then you by all means, oh, favourite knife, um, by all means you can... Um, put more chocolate on the top of it. But I like it to be just a thin layer of chocolate on the top. And then all you have to do is to go to your bit that you've scored and it will just very easily cut through. Can I get you to move back a little bit, Docs? We can't actually see that. Thank you very much. And then your one piece comes and you can see that because I scored it, it's, have, it's got a really nice sharp edge where the cutting edge is. And look at that gooey toffee. Look, 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 look. Toffee, toffee, toffee. A nice, it's all nice that going to get to your neighbours? Sorry? It's all of that going to get to your neighbours, Doc? Yes. Yeah. They're queuing up for it. <laughs> and as you can see, the shortbread... Oh, oh, I can't remember out which way the camera is. You can see the shortbread is quite firm. It's no crumbly. So I hate it when you get a piece of caramel shortbread and... You eat the caramel shortbread and then you have to pick up all the crumbs of the shortbread afterwards because it's all fallen out onto the plate. So that's why I, I add a little bit of, um, oh, look, the chocolate's melting on my fingers. How tragic is that? Um, that's why I add a little bit of um, water to the shortbread, although the recipe doesn't actually call for it because um, it, it just holds the shortbread a little bit better together. And that's your lovely piece of caramel shortbread. Ta-da! So when, when your chocolate is completely melted, pop it onto the top of your um, caramel and then let the caramel, let it just semi-set, then score it with your knife and then just leave it to set. Um, I made this one about lunchtime, about 12 o'clock, and it's well and truly set now. So and that oats is caramel shortbread. We do have one final question, and there is one major issue of eating caramel shortbread. That's and that. that is, how do you eat your caramel shortbread? Ah, well. It, does it squidge out? How do you do it? Well, I have to say that I turn it upside down, and I eat it with it. So I'm biting into the shortbread and the caramel first, and then the chocolate last, because I don't like when you bite into it, it all squidges out. So I, I bite into it that way. Yeah, upside uh, down. Upside down. Well, for me, it's right way up. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, <laughs> and she's added Tia Maria to her chocolate. Mmm, nice. Some, one th what, some of the things I do is um, I've made it before and I've put um, freeze-dried raspberries in the chocolate, and that's really nice. I'm, I'm just going to turn this chocolate off now. Um, and I've, um, sometimes I buy flavoured chocolate, you know, like um, 
uh, chocolate with honeycomb in it or something like that, and I'll use that for the top. And the other thing I've done is um, melt the chocolate, put it on the top, and then push um, Maltesers into the top of it. But you could put any of your favourite sweets on the top just to add it up. Sometimes I put the dark chocolate on and then I put white chocolate and swirl it around. So there's all sorts of things. You can add anything to the chocolate that you like, just nothing too wet because anything too wet will just bleed into your chocolate. Um, but yeah, Bailey's or Tia Maria or uh, anything really. Hmm. Yeah. Just watch with, watch with your alcohol, though, to make sure you don't put too much in it so the chocolate doesn't set. An actual proper question. When chocolate is on, do you cool it in the fridge or the room? I never cool my chocolate in the fridge because I think it makes it go very dull and um, it blooms a little bit. You get that sort of white bloom on it if you put it, I think, if you put hot chocolate in the fridge to cool. So I always leave it cool in, in the room. And the next question, would it be bad to have some for breakfast? No. <laughs> it would not be bad. <laughs> I add a few raspberries to it, so you're at least having one of your five a day. <laughs> there you go. That sounds amazing. It really does sound amazing. Um, I think this is a, a comment that, uh, that we all feel, Dot. Um, you've been fab as always, and everybody really appreciates it appreciates you taking the time and effort to to do these for everybody um, oh it's my pleasure so yeah we don't do it for any other reason apart from to keep people entertained and give us something to look forward to um yeah. there's nothing more nothing than that. <laughs> and do you know it, it made my day a better day today knowing that we were doing this tonight <laughs> um, so even for me it's uh, it's really helpful as well dot so thank you for yeah, that no, i love it i love doing it i love to catch up with everybody because I follow people on Facebook a bit. I'm not the biggest Facebook person, I have to say. I'd, you know, I'd, I'd go for days and don't ever look at it, and then I suddenly sort of try and catch up with what's been going on. But um, it's nice to see what people are doing, but it's, this feels like you're more connected with people, which is it's lovely. No, it's yeah, there's loads of messages coming in. I know you can't see them at the moment, but um, basically everybody's just saying thank you, Dot. Um, and uh, lots of hearts and lots of uh, all of that type of stuff. So... Um, <laughs> to everybody I hope all these hearts are going to turn into dances when I come back that was that would be amazing so my my <laughs> last uh, my last request is that um, for everybody that has made a um, caramel shortbread tonight if you can take a photo of you with your shortbread and send it to me via Facebook via PM that would be amazing it's Richard Bogle's on if you weren't aware of that um, and I'll try and put a collate, collate all the pictures together and uh, pop them in um, for everybody to see. So, uh, yeah, if you can take a picture of you holding up your caramel shortbread or taking a bite out of it, however you want to do it, um, and please do send me the pictures, and uh, everybody would love to see that. Uh, it brings some light to everyone's day. It really does. So, yeah. um, so we're going to... some pounds to the hips. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm presenting it and not making it. So... <laughs> and that's why all of mine is promised to my neighbours. <laughs> Absolutely. So, as always, Dot, a massive, massive thank you for doing this. Um, we really do appreciate it. Um, no doubt we'll do another one in the not-too-distant future because uh, we all love it. And, uh, and yeah, thank you all so much, as always, Dot. That's, that's okay. Perhaps we'll cook something healthy. <laughs> I very much doubt it. <laughs> we can eat healthy every other day of the week. Let's, let's just be naughty. <laughs> well, I need ideas of what people would like to bake. So, yeah, we will do, um, yeah, please do send me uh, some messages about what you'd like us to bake next time. Um, I was even considering doing something that could almost be quite complex. I don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing, um, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. This is broadcasting via Facebook, so who knows? But uh, anyway, right, we'll pit our fun farewells, everyone. So thank you so much for watching. Um, Bye. Uh, and we will I'm see you soon. <laughs> and next week, for those that are around, we are planning on doing Ciroc Bingo. So uh, I don't require anything at all apart from pen and paper. If anybody does want to donate some fun gifts, then do please feel free. Um, so, yeah, so that's next Tuesday night, Ciroc Bingo, free of charge. We'll make it lots of fun for everybody, all about being connected to the community again. You should have been doing it tomorrow. They could have had Cardinal Shop Day as a prize. <laughs> yeah. so I might pop around and pick it up. Don't worry. I'm, I'm interested in it. <laughs> Bye, Adios, everybody. Everybody.
Thank you very you much. Got you,